snake bracelet. Looks to me 19th century, turquoise, and I'm given to understand it's gold plated. And how did you get hold of it? Years ago, I used to stay with my aunt and uncle during school holidays. So I always used to get hold of her jewelry and dress up in it. And every time I came home, I used to come home with another little item, and this was one of them. Being as it is a base metal that has been gilded, eventually it leaves a stain on your hand. But when it's well plated, it seems to last, and as you can see, it's an old piece and it's lasted extremely well. And it doesn't do that. It, there is a repair under the head. You can see where they've done a lead repair, oh, yes. okay? It's quite acceptable, it's underneath, it's not seen, you know, when you're wearing it, it's not noticeable. So if somebody wanted to buy it, I'm sure, you know, it wouldn't worry them. Money-wise, I will make just one offer and see what happens. You might say, no, no, no. <laughs> 50, um, 60, 70, 75. Now to me, that's what it's worth. Hi, David. <laughs> well, I have to tell you, I thought the valuers were a little bit on the low side here. They say 50 to 80. Now, I know it's only gold-plated, but it has a look about it that makes it quirky, interesting, different. And, in fact, I think I know somebody who might even want to be wearing it with their bathrobe or something like that. <laughs> so I'm going to say I would have said another tenner here, something as... <laughs> Something as nice as this, you know as well as I do, it'll be on your wrist anyway, love, so you won't regret it. You'll wear it. He's always saying I won't regret it. I'll go with the main man, another ten pounds. I bet you will. Deal. Another ten pounds. My <laughs> ten pounds. Come on. We've got a deal, though. Got a deal? Okay. He's going to love I'm it, crazy. you know that. You know, so we have another ten pounds. Yes. Okay. Why am I buying this? It's metal. Because <laughs> it's quaint. So quaint and quaint. 85 pounds and we are done. Yes. You shake on it. Thank you. All right. Oh my God. Metal. <laughs> Very nice gentleman, very good deal. I can tell you now, I would have taken a little bit less. That little bit extra just made my day. The bracelet snakes its way into Ian's shop. Find out if he makes a profit later in the show. Next on Lady Alison Chapman's table is a force to be reckoned with in the form of mother and daughter duo Lillian and Amanda. These are your silver-plated serviette rings. So what, what makes them special? Well, we know they're White Star. OK, so White Star, they own Titanic. But these aren't Titanic. I so wish they were because it would make them ten times easier to sell on. They are what they are. They're a white star, star line, silver-plated napkin ring. So how did you come by them? Well, we had a brownie jumble sale, and at the end of the sale, you know, all the rubbish, and they were going to go into the bin because they were black, and they were all tied together with postman string. So I thought I'd clean them up and have a dinner party. They went into a drawer, and they stayed there for about 45 years. Did they? Do you know anyone that uses serviette rings nowadays? Probably the Queen. The Queen would, yes, wouldn't she? Queen Definitely. Would, yes. So I'll put her on my potential client <laughs> list. But anyway, let's put my money on the table. Ten pounds. That's a good starter. <laughs> Is that for one? No. You don't really want them, Alison, do you? Yeah, you've read me very well. <laughs> if they were silver, I'd be, like, delving deep. Let's call it 15, then. I don't see them at Fastly more than that. I'm ever so sorry, Lillian. Where do you see them at? A lot more than that, I'm afraid. Do you? Yes. So do you think you ought to go to auction with them? Would you go to auction if you were me? Not with silver-plated serviette rings, I wouldn't. But it depends if they can promote... It's the history, isn't it? Well, what history do they have? They were made by the White... Or they were used by the White Star Line and they happened to have a ship called Titanic that sank. You've got no romance in your soul. Yeah. I have so much romance, it pours out of me. It's but a not glamorous me. time. The art it was a glamorous time. time and, and in that time, there were many glamorous things made. But I am listening to your story and I fooled for your story to the tune of £15. So what would you like to do, Lillian? I think we'd go to auction, yes. yes. Off to auction? Have you ever been to auction? No. 
you'll have a lot of fun. It means you can spend time with David, and I hope you do well with them there. Thank you ever so much, Lillian. Thank you. Thanks Thank you, Amanda. Me. Thank you. Dear, Alison wasn't impressed by the silver star serviette rings, was she? Hopefully there'll be some buyers at the auction who'll love them. Let's find out as they go under the gavel of auctioneer William Rouse. 12, 14. You brought along something rather interesting. You brought along five Elkington silver-plated napkin rings. Now, Alison said, I will give you £15 for your silver-plated uh, rings, which would have made a nice profit, but you turned her down. <laughs> The reserve is 40 quid. Dare I say it, are they going to sink in the sale room or are they going to sail? Let's find out, they're coming up now. 20 pounds then to go, 20 on bid everywhere. 22, 25, 28, 30, 32, 35, 38, 40. Uh, on the money, 42, 45. It's amazing what this White Star connection does. 60, 65, 65 pounds here. At 65, they're going. OK, £65 under the gavel, a very good result. Take away the commission and you're going home with £55. Any idea what you're going to do with the money? I think we'll have a meal out. <laughs> OK. <laughs> it sounds like the girls, mother and daughter, are going to have a nice meal out with their 55 quid, and that was the real deal. Armed and ready for his next lot, we're over with Michael Hogman. What do you know about your gun? Um, I know it was my grandfather's. Um, my grandparents were publicans, they had right. pubs many years ago. And an Irishman, um, I know, had no money and needed money and sold it to my granddad. And he used it then. Uh, he had animals out the back of the pub, uh, yeah. hens and chickens and stuff, and the foxes kept getting in and killing them, and he used that to get rid of them. Wow. Yeah. They have to be deactivated. Yeah, it has been. This has been deactivated. Yeah. yeah. This is about 1830, 1850. OK. It's called a flintlock musket. And the, the nice one about this one is you've got the maker's name on here, Lacey & Co. Yeah. And it's, it's pitted, it's been used, like you say, but it's still quite a nice piece. This is walnut. Yeah. The stock. OK. And brass highlights. Had a little bit of work done. And collectors of this sort of memorabilia, they do look for the best quality they want the best of the best. OK. Bit about the money now, isn't it, Matthew? It is. Last one I think I sold was about 150 quid's worth, so 20, 40, 60, 80 quid. No. About 100 quid? No. Do you rate it quite high? Higher than that. But are you emotionally attached, attached to it? Yeah, as I say, it's my granddad's, obviously. I've had it for years. I'm not going yeah. to part, part with it for that money, definitely not. I'm no. going to keep it. All right. 120. No. 140, that's my final offer. No. A bit more than that. How much more? Another 50 quid. Another 50? Yeah. Come on. You know David what's more than that. Two to three hundred pounds is the estimation. Not a bad little gun, it's quite clean, the barrel is pitted, but as a wall piece, I think it's all right. Got Not be, enough. Got to be 160, 170, something like that, hasn't it? I think it's worth a little bit more. 160. That has tempted the cockles of your art, hasn't it? <laughs> You're getting there. <laughs> no, but that's a good bid. I've got to make a Come profit, on, put another Matt. score on there and we'll have a deal. Fair enough, I'm going to say to you, another £20 is not an expensive item. We need to work on more than 20 quid profit nowadays, David. That's 5% of my money. You'll double your money on that. I'll tell you what more, I'll do. More than, 20, more than 20 quid? Yeah. If I, get, if I pay 180 and get 200, it's 20 quid profit. Oh. You'll get more than two for that. You know that. I could earn more than that being a milkman. <laughs> but listen. You know different because you used to be a milkman. Cock and egg. Cock and egg. Oh, I'm going to go out the way there. He's very difficult to deal with sometimes, this man. <laughs> so he's got 160. He's going to put another £10, 170. Make your mind up time. It's not about being difficult. It's just about making a profit, which is Yeah, no, I understand that. So, Matt, there is my offer. £170 in cash from the most handsome antique dealer on the show. Yes. Matt, it's been good to do business with you. Thanks a lot. Cheers. it be a good one. Thanks. Thanks.